is Rita Carl, Director of Education at Challenger Center for Space Science Education. Today's guest is Charles Duke, and our subject is the Apollo program. Mr. Duke is a retired U.S. Air Force pilot and Reserve Brigadier General. Mr. Duke graduated from the Naval Academy and was one of 19 astronauts selected by NASA in April of 1966. He served as member of the astronaut support crew for the Apollo 10 flight, was capsule communicator for Apollo 11, the first landing on the moon, and was the backup lunar module pilot on Apollo 13. Mr. Duke was the lunar module pilot of Apollo 16 that flew to the moon in 1972. He was accompanied on the fifth manned lunar landing mission by John W. Young, spacecraft commander, and Thomas K. Mattingly II, command module pilot. Apollo 16 was the first scientific expedition to visit the Descartes region of the rugged lunar highlands. On the lunar surface for 71 hours and 14 minutes, Duke and Young landed their lunar module Orion on the rough Cayley Plains. They each logged 20 hours and 15 minutes in moonwalks, setting up scientific equipment and experiments, collecting over 200 pounds of rock and soil samples, and driving the moon rover over the roughest surface encountered on the moon. Mr. Duke also served as backup lunar module pilot for Apollo 17. In 1975, Duke retired from the astronaut program. Thank you and welcome this morning, Mr. Duke. Uh, it was really good to be with you. Glad to uh, have the opportunity to talk to you. We have some questions for you about your experiences growing up and as an Apollo astronaut. And since this interview is for students, we'd like to start with some questions about your childhood. Where were you born and what was your childhood like? Uh, I was born in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, but uh, actually was raised in South Carolina, uh, various communities in South Carolina. I had a uh, twin brother, uh, and we had a, a wonderful childhood, uh, very supportive parents, uh, also uh, uh, relatives. We had a big extended family. Uh, we had uh, uh, teachers, uh, friends, uh, neighbors that uh, encouraged us to uh, do our best and to uh, basically uh, 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 stay, uh, uh, set goals and set yourself uh, uh, on a pathway to success. And so it was a very encouraging childhood and a lot of fun. What was your favorite subject in school and did you have a favorite teacher? Uh, I, my favorite subject was math uh, and uh, I was very good in math and I did have a, a favorite teacher in grammar school. Her name was Mrs. Robinson, uh, and she was a great encouragement and, and a good mentor uh, in those early uh, formative years in school. What was it like to be selected to be an astronaut, and why do you think you were selected? Well, of course, it was a great thrill and honor to uh, have been selected. The competition was very keen. Uh, uh, I uh, applied because uh, when NASA was looking for more astronauts, it listed a set of qualifications, and I said, well, that's me, uh, and uh, so I decided to apply. I think I was selected because of my flight experience uh, in military aircraft, uh, plus my uh, test pilot school uh, uh, education, and also, finally, the uh, uh, fact that I had a master's degree from MIT in aeronautics and astronautics. So all of that melded into a, 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 good, uh, a good opportunity, and I was selected. How long did you prepare for going to the moon, and what was that process of training like? Uh, the uh, longest part of training was the geology. Uh, we were going to pick up a number of uh, different samples, and they wanted us to do a good job geologically. So uh, from the time I was selected in 1966 to 1972, we were involved in extensive geological training, which resulted in almost a master's degree in geology. Uh, but uh, the most intense part, of course, was the actually flying the spacecraft, learning in the simulator, uh, doing the lunar surface experiments. Uh, it took many, many hours of uh, dedicated uh, hard work uh, to get ready to go. And so when John and I launched on the 16th of April, 1972, we thought we were well prepared uh, to accomplish uh, our uh, goal of uh, exploring the Descartes Highlands. And fortunately, uh, we had a very successful mission. Before we move on to your flight, can you tell us a little bit about being the capsule communicator for Apollo 11 and what it was like being part of the first moon landing? 
Well, again, it was a great honor for me to have been selected for that job by uh, Neil and Buzz. Uh, and uh, so when we uh, started our descent, of course, uh, we were really focused in mission control. We had uh, practiced it uh, through uh, simulations over and over. Uh, and we felt like we could handle any problems, and sure enough, we had a lot of problems uh, on the descent. Uh, first, the communications uh, got uh, very scratchy, uh, data dropouts, then we had computer overloads, and so you can imagine the tension was rising in mission control as we got more and more anxious as we continued this descent. Uh, then when we got down uh, four or 500 feet off the lunar surface, the guidance was taking them into a very... Uh, uh, rough place, unable to land there, so they had to overfly that, which took more fuel. Now we were really focused on the, the fuel state. Uh, I called uh, Eagle 30 seconds, which meant they had 30 seconds to land. The next call for mission control was going to be Eagle abort. Four forward, drifting to the right a little. Down and a half. 30 seconds forward. Just uh, and about 13 seconds later, according to my watch, uh, I heard uh, Buzz Aldrin say, uh, uh, contact engine stop. And uh, we knew they were on the ground. Uh, and I said, copy you down uh, quickly. And then Neil came back uh, with uh, uh, Houston Tranquility Base Eagle. The Eagle has landed. And that was a great sigh of relief in mission control because we were all holding our breath. And I told them, uh, you got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. We copy you down, Eagle. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. So the tension went to joy uh, as uh, we made that successful landing. That was a very memorable uh, time for all of us. And moving on to your flight, what was it like to go to and, and walk on and work on the moon? Well, of course, it was an exciting adventure uh, and even uh, more exciting for us because one hour before we were to land, we were on the backside of the moon, and T.K. Mattingly, who was the command module pilot, reported a major problem with the with the service module engine, which is your ride home. And so we had to abort our landing uh, one hour before we were to land because he could not burn his engine uh, to change his orbit. Uh, and so that resulted in an abort for us. So you can imagine we were very disappointed. We'd come 240,000 miles. We trained for two years, and uh, we could see our landing site eight miles beneath us. Uh, in orbit, and they were about to tell us to come home. Uh, fortunately, the teamwork and the expertise and uh, knowledge, uh, wisdom of mission control uh, came into play again, as it did on every mission, uh, and it took them six hours uh, to fix it, uh, but uh, after six hours, uh, we were given a go to land, and we made a successful landing into the Cart Highlands. Uh, and you can imagine if, uh, the excitement that John and I had once we uh, la landed. We were uh, shouting into the microphone, uh, Houston, old Orion is finally here. Fantastic. 50 feet, down at four. Give me one click up. Be backing up slightly. Okay, two down. Stand by for contact. Come a letter down. You level off. Better on down. Okay, 76%, plenty fat. Contact. Stop. Boom. Oh, man. Now we don't have to walk far to pick up blocks. Man, I could see the, I could see all the way to the ground, just like flying the LTV. Piece of cake. Uh, and that began a 71-hour and 14-minute stay on the lunar surface, uh, which was, of course, the thrill of my life.